I'm delighted to be invited back to the Origin Theatre First Irish Festival in New York this year. Um, it's usually theatre, but this year because of COVID, uh, it's spread out its wings and they've invited me back to um, present a showing of my documentary The Burning of Cork because this is a hundred years since the city was burnt and um, I hope you enjoy the show. I'm here in Cork City Hall Council Chamber and it's very significant that that's where I am because this building, the building that stood in the site was burnt to the ground on the night of the Burning of Cork as was the Carnegie Library next door. But also there were two other very specific locations in the city burnt. One would have been the, the centre of, I suppose, Commerce, Patrick Street and all those streets that are there and plus the residential area. Uh, close to Victoria Barracks, Collins Barracks these days, the whole area of Dillon's Cross was destroyed. I remember 1916 or 1919-ish, I came across a photograph of Patrick Street and there in the background was a very distinctive, um, the Lee Cinema, which is still standing, right? And also a sign for the Munster Arcade. And that, they were the only two recognisable things, the rest was just pure devastation. And it crossed my mind that those two businesses were still trading when I was a teenager. and. They sort of gave me a sense that uh, it was a bit like a phoenix-like moment, that this was the, these were the new, I suppose, uh, you know, grassroots starting to grow almost immediately. And um, I suppose since that time I had been on a trail of discovery and I started off visiting old folks' homes, places like um, uh, retirement homes, uh, share building over in the marsh, and just talking to elderly people really who, may, who obviously wouldn't have personal memories but would have an echo of a memory of something that happened and that then led me I suppose to, that was sort of an emotional end to the to the whole story rather than a big fire that happened in the city and uh, that followed like a visit to various museums archives microfilm miles of microfilm and what struck me was that what it was what I'd always thought was one big event the Burnie of Cork it was actually uh, a very big narrative that led to that event, right? And it was a narrative that was very specific to the city. It involved the death of two Lord Mayors, uh, Thomas McCartan and Terence McSweeney, um, a whole series of ambushes, burnings, uh, shootings, executions, hunger strikes. When I was going through the microfilm and I knew this was going to happen on the 11th of December, and it was a bit like that film, Back to the Future, where I know what's going to happen, but the people on the ground in the day didn't. And I found that intriguing. And it, that in itself was, it gave me, it made almost my personal story. I felt it was my story because I knew what was happening, but nobody else seemed to know in the world I was living at that time, right? Then, of course, I was very fortunate and very privileged to engage with and meet and spend a lot of time with the families of the principal people involved. So the McCurtain family, the McSweeney family, the Delaney family. Then, just because Cork was made City of Culture, European City of Culture in 2005, the opportunity arose to make a documentary and the making of it was um, it was a voyage of discovery for me rather than a fait accompli. It wasn't like as I knew what it was going, like this was, the whole thing was an emotional engagement with a story. And, you know, I think it's a story that had to be told and I'm delighted to get the opportunity to tell it.